The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 500. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Before I start today's episode, I wanted to let you know that this will be the last episode for Season 3, and we'll have a brand new season, season four, starting September 3rd, 2018. I'm really grateful to reach episode 500. It's been crazy, but amazing. And I just wanted to thank you all for always tuning in to these amazing stories of women's stories to their journey to self-confidence. So keep listening and look forward to us for the new season on September 3rd, 2018. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a career counselor, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Deborah Kang. Deborah, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Oh, sure. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, Like you said, I'm serving as a career counselor now. I'm at the University of San Francisco. I'm new to the Bay Area. I just moved here just a year ago, and I'm coming from the South in Georgia. I finished my undergraduate degree in public policy at Georgia State University, and then I immediately got my degree in college student affairs administration at the University of Georgia after discovering that I wanted to work in education and help students transition from college to their career. So yeah, I'm here to tell my story. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Deborah, what's your cultural background? I am Korean American. I'm a daughter of immigrants from Seoul, Korea. Thanks for sharing that. And what be your favorite self-confidence quote? I have a lot of quotes that I keep, but the one that always that always comes to mind is the uh, you got to dance like there's nobody watching. And I tried Googling this to see if it was from a song or if someone had said it, but there's a lot of different answers. The two that I came up with was William Perky or um, Susanna Clark and Richard Lee. Um, So I really resonate with that quote because it's quite literal to me. I love to dance. And so it resonates with me. You know, when I dance, I feel goofy or sexy, clumsy and strong, all these different things. But I try to remember that quote and focus my energy on how I'm progressing and not about how other people might think of me and their judgments. So I'm not a great dancer, but I enjoy the activity. So I know I'm not going to be giving that up anytime soon. And I want to carry that kind of confidence over into other parts of my life. Thanks for sharing that. And Deborah, what would be your definition of self-confidence? Self-confidence to me is a form of self-love. I think love for yourself gives you courage to pursue challenges and embrace discomfort because you believe in your abilities, personality, or character. Once you have self-confidence, the opinions of others carry less weight and you care more about doing right by you and the authentic you. It took me a long time to find my own self-confidence and there's still days that when I doubt myself, but I'm usually excited to try something that makes me a little bit uncomfortable since I recognize that there's a lesson to be learned and I strongly believe in my abilities and value my willingness to grow. Thanks for sharing that great definition. You know, I also believe, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone does help you learn to grow and be stronger and have more confidence. So thanks for sharing that. And Deborah, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I was constantly comparing myself to others. I cared a lot about what they thought of me. And with the internet, I felt like the whole world was better than me or bigger, stronger and smarter, everything that I wasn't, or that's at least how I felt. And I used to obsess or even avoid those like 30 under 30 or 40 under 40 lists because it started feeling more like pressure than motivation. I spent a lot of energy stuck in like the comparison game, even when I was doing amazing things like getting a college degree despite being a first generation student or while working 40 to 65 hours taking classes or moving across the country or applying to graduate school and getting admitted and making friends from like really diverse backgrounds. I was less focused on the 
the great things I was doing. And lack of confidence took up time and energy that I really could have spent on learning more about myself or even serving others. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all can relate, the comparing game, uh, especially as growing up as Asian kids or as Asian girls, like we're so great at comparing each other to, you know, people on the magazine, like you mentioned, people who make it on top 30 under 30 lists, people on Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, we see them as like, they're so perfect. And like, then we shame ourselves to the point where it's like, we feel so bad that we're not like them. And, you know, we don't have to be, you know, we don't know what their story's like. We don't know what they've been through. And, you know, instead of comparing ourselves, we should actually celebrate it because, you know, people have achieved something. And if it's possible for them, it's possible for us. And, you know, it was that point in your life when you realize, you know, you're more than enough to go out there and be the person that you are today, be confident, you know, even if you're scared, take action. What was that aha moment? It was actually pretty recently when I started my job search, you know, that it took me a long time to find self-confidence, I think because of my cultural background. I, I know my experience is different from a lot of other people, but just even as a child, I was, you know, compared to my cousins or how my mother's friends' kids were doing. And that kind of comparison always stuck with me. So I, I did spend a lot more time being not so confident. So when I started my job search, by that point, I had read a lot of articles about people missing out on all these great experiences because they didn't feel confident about their job status or abilities or like their appearance um, in a physical sense. And then it hit me that, you know, life is too short and too beautiful for that. We all have very unique experiences perspectives and bring our own sense of beauty into this world. And it sucks that we are missing out on moments of fun or opportunities to shine because of lack of confidence. So I reflected on all the great things that I had worked on and all that I have accomplished and obstacles I overcame with the help of, of course, like my friends and family and resources that I had access to. But, you know, having had such a difficult college journey and all the hard work I had put into that, I didn't want to miss out on job opportunities or other amazing experiences because I was nervous or scared and I was writing myself off. So once I started that job search and practiced reflection on myself and started writing the dreaded resume and cover letters, I was able to really discover like that I've, I'm confident in my skills and abilities. Thanks for sharing that. And that's great. You know, even though that you were scared, you know, like we're all scared when we first apply for a job or have a resume or start a business or, you know, go out for af go after what we want to do. It's scary. And, and to the point where it like stops us, holds us back. But, you know, confidence is just doing the things that scare you. And once you kind of go over that, that fear, it's actually not as bad as you think. You know, you like look back and you're like, what was I scared about? Right. But it's, it's part of the process. It's part of how we, you know, build our confidence. It's a learning process. It's something that we can relate with other people, which is great. And, you know, because of your realizations, what's your life been like now? My life has opened up. I find myself more because of my confidence, I'm able to try new things and enjoy the challenges that come with it. Uh, I took a sewing class recently. I traveled overseas, went skydiving, started a hip hop class. I've been really meeting a bunch of new people too through these experiences. I feel confident about striking up conversations with strangers all the time. I've built connections with people at work from different departments or even other institutions. And I shamelessly contact people through LinkedIn or other social media because I want to get to know their stories and their professional journey. And I don't think I could have done this without my self-confidence. It was really validating to hear from a coworker recently that I'm the type to make friends with anyone. Before experiencing confidence, I was so consumed in my thoughts and constantly compared myself to others, as I mentioned before, which made me super awkward about meeting people and letting them into my life. So I hope to continue to build on this confidence and hold on to that adventurous spirit that I've gained. I really think that my confidence is helping me create and live a more fuller life. Thanks for sharing that. And that's great. You're out there trying new things, talking to people shamelessly, you know, just to know their stories, which is great. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we have to be a little bit shameless, you know, um, to go out there and, and, you know, go after what we want, our dreams. So, I mean, if I didn't 
contact all these women i mean i wouldn't have a show so um, i did the same thing shamelessly it's either they say yes or no and you know if they say no we just keep going so i, I really i'm really glad that you mentioned that and you know to the woman who's listening to the to your episode she may be in her own journey of self-confidence what'd be that one tip you would give to her be, be gracious to yourself it's going to take time and energy and patience to build confidence almost like building a new habit of like positive thinking for yourself. As women, we ex we may experience imposter syndrome and the pressures of perfectionism can really get overwhelming. And there's a lot of mixed messages out there about how women should behave, especially women of color. I think grace is really necessary. It takes patience and time to quiet those moments of doubt. So um, practice positive thinking. And uh, when you're feeling doubt or fear, really remember that word of grace read more talk to professional counselors or whatever support system listen to podcasts wink wink nudge nudge especially about people who are confident authentic unapologetic and just plain happy and i think just gathering all those resources and ideas will help kind of push us forward towards self-confidence thanks for sharing those great tips and Deborah, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, I'm due to the nature of my work. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn and I love meeting people through that. So if you just look for Deborah King, I should pop up for University of San Francisco. I also have my own website, just debking.com, D-E-B-K-A-N-G.com. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Deborah, you can also head on over to the TaoofSelfConfidence.com and search for Deborah's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Deborah today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, just be reminded that this will be the last episode for season three and be on the lookout for a brand new season on September 3rd, 2018. Again, many thanks and I'll see you in the new season. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.